What's up, everybody? Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. There's a lot that needs to be talked about, so let's go. Guys, they finally found her. After 80 years of mysteriously disappearing, they have finally found the remains of pioneer aviator Amelia Earhart, and this has finally been identified due to research published in the Forensic Anthropology. Now, the person who wrote this was Richard Jans, who is the director of the Forensics Anthropology Center at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. And the paper was used as a range of approach to reassess 13 bones recovered from the uh, remote South Pacific island of, I hope I say his name correctly, Nukumaroro in 1940. Now, Jantz said in his paper that the, uh, the analysis reveals that Earhart is more similar to the the bones that was found at the South Pacific Island than 99% of the uh, the individuals in a large reference sample. Now this story continues on, you know that supports that during this whole uh, fiasco, those bones actually were Amelia Earhart. Now Earhart, as we all know, was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. That's my girl, and she went missing along with aviator uh, Fred Noonan in July 1937 during the Paris attempt to fly around the world. Now, there was a lot of search parties dispatched in the, you know, in the following weeks following their disappearance and their signs and everything, trying to figure out what happened to them. And they found, trying to figure out what happened around that island. Uh, it's basically her last known location, but there was no bodies or no wreckage. So, I'm thinking aliens, maybe? No? Okay, never mind. But, uh, Earhart and Noonan were declared dead in the abyss in 1939, uh, and sparking a lot of theories as to what happened. And then the plot thickened in 1940 when a British work crew constructing a sediment on an island came across human skeleton remains in which they thought belonged to a woman. So, maybe. And later on, it's suggested that on that island, it turned up a wealth of other suggestive artifacts, including a sex tent a box that it may have been Noonan's, parts of a woman's shoe, and a bottle, a liquor that might have been Earhart's. So you never know. Now, this case was kind of strong being Amelia Earhart's final resting place. And, you know, people were trying to figure out, like, what about the other guy? But it was complicated because nobody can identify these bones. Until 1941, when uh, medical examiner D. W. Hoodless he deemed that those those bones were male, and you know basically because of the wreck freighter S. S. Norwich City, which ran around the location in 1929. Unfortunately, those bones were misplaced and they were never tracked down. Again, I'm thinking aliens. Hmm. And then Jantz, you know, he basically he went on, he analyzed these bones, and he went and said that, y'all, these are basically Amelia Earhart's bones. And everybody just freaking lost it. I know, when I saw this, I freaking lost it because I am so happy they finally found her. I don't know what the hell happened to her. She might have gone into the Bermuda Triangle. Who knows? But it's actually a great thing that they actually found her bones, and they actually know what actually happened to her. But the question remains is, what happened to Noonan? Okay. Second thing I want to talk to you guys, it finally happened. Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump are going to meet. Yeah, I know. WW3, here we go. And how did this all happen and everything? Well, Kim Jong-un, he invited Trump to meet with him over negotiations over its nuclear program and audacious, you know, diplomatic overture that would bring together two strong-willed leaders who have traded threats of war. And now the White House has said that Trump has accepted the offer and, you know, uh, Chung in yong uh, South Korea official, has confirmed this. He told reporters that he will be meeting Kim Jong-un within two months. Now, he said he expressed his uh, eagerness to Trump and as soon as possible and that he said that on the House, to the White House, on Thursday evening after meeting with Trump. And he said he has agreed to meet with him uh, by May to achieve permanent denuclearization. Now, Trump, you know, he expressed his optimism about the meeting over a tweet, saying that he has talked to Kim, Mr. Kim about it and, you know, talked about the whole uh, denuclearization of, with South Korea representatives, and it's not just freeze. And then he also, there is no missile testing by North Korea during this time. And, you know, he said great progress being made, but sanctions will remain until an agreement is reached and meaning 
meeting being planned. Now, Mr. Chung, who uh, who's talked to Mr. Kim on Monday in Pyeongchang, uh, resulted in the invitation, noted that the leader uh, said that he understood that joint military ex exercises with the United States and South Korea would go ahead and schedule at the end of the Paralympic Games of this month. So right now, the Olympics, uh, the Paralympics are actually going on right now. And Trump, he said, you know, he wanted a meeting with this, you know, uh, he, a leader he threatened as uh, fire and fury and as uh, called him the little rocket man and a breathtaking, breathtaking gamble, you know, so, yeah, so who knows what this meeting is going to be like and everything in May. Now, no sitting president has ever met with a North Korea leader and Trump himself has repeatedly vowed that he would not commit the error of his predecessors by being drawn into protected uh, negotiation and North Korea's extracted con uh, concessions from the United States that's being held with key elements of its nuclear program. And with meeting meeting the North the Kim Jong Un now, he would rather have rather at the end rather than end the negotiation with the U.S. would presumably be extracting concessions from North Korea. It's basically an enormous gesture by Trump. And since both Trump and Kim have, you know, a panic for bold, dramatic moves, and they really do, uh, and their personal uh, participation in the negotiation could take in, you know, unexpected directions. So basically, just like I said, World War Three, basically. And the announcement was itself was delivered in an improv style that was believed to be historic segregation. Uh, significance. So Trump teased on the news saying that he was going to meet with Kim Jong-un. And then, you know, basically he said he shortly met with the White House briefing room shortly after 5 p.m. to tell him that, uh, to, to tell the reporters from South Korea that he will be meeting, that he actually will make the announcement at 7. And so he went on to Mr. Chang, who was uh, who was President uh, Moon Jae-in's uh, national security uh, advisor to deliver the news to the reporters and standing in the way and uh, in the West Wing and everything along the way. Now, after this, Trump has confirmed that he was actually going to meet with Kim Jong Un and everything along the way. But behind the scenes of this, Trump was not scheduled to meet with Mr. Chung until Friday. But when heard about this, you know, Trump was like, "Oh, I got to meet this guy. I got to meet this guy so that way we can deal with this and everything." Blah blah blah. Y'all, I really why. This is who we voted for. I didn't vote for him. But this is who y'all voted for. Okay? I know some of y'all think, oh my god, this is a good idea. And some of y'all like, oh my god, what in the world? This is this is where we just gonna go WW3. That's that's all I'm gonna say. I feel like something's is gonna happen. Something bad is gonna happen on this. And it's just so much to bear with, you know, and just listen about all this as well. But there is good out of this, I will say, in this video. Like I was saying, we found Amelia Earhart. And then you got bad news with Trump and Kim Jong-un. But I got some more good news. Obama is coming back. Obama is coming back. Well, not as president. But he is, you know, making negotiations with Netflix to produce a series of high-profile shows that will provide him a global platform after his departure from the White House, according to people familiar with the discussion. Now, under the proposed deal, he... uh. Him, Michelle, and Netflix, you know, they came to a consent that they will be streaming online on Netflix, which has nearly 118 million subscribers around the world. Now, the number of episodes and the formats for these shows have not been decided, but Mr. Uh, President, oh, sorry, former President Obama, he intended to use the Netflix shows to directly respond to Trump or his 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 conservative critics, according to people familiar with the discussions about the program and everything. And Obama has said that he has talked to producing shows that have highlighted inspirational stories. Now, with this Netflix deal, uh, which is not a direct answer to Fox News or any other news program, this will give uh, Obama an unfiltered method of communications with the public, uh, similar to the audiences he, he already reached through social media with 101 million Twitter followers and 55 million people who love his Facebook posts. I'm one of those people who are following him on Twitter and on Facebook. So there you go. 
And uh, one of the representatives from, uh, actually, a senior advisor for the former president, uh, Eric Schultz, he said that President and Ms. Obama have always believed in the power of storytelling to aspire. Throughout their lives, they have lifted up stories to uh, millions of people whose efforts to make a difference are quite... Uh, quietly changing the world for the better. As they are considering the, the future proposal uh, plans, sorry, not proposal, personal plans, uh, they continue to explore new ways to help others tell and share their stories. So this is really, really good to hear about this. I am, I'm gonna watch it no matter what, because if you got the Obama family in it, I'm gonna watch it, okay? And there's a lot going on, so President, o former President Obama, he has a show idea. Possibly, he's going to moderate uh, concert uh, conversations, basically talking about like healthcare, voting rights, immigration, foreign policies, climate change, that kind of thing, and so much more. And then another program could be like Miss Obama dealing with nutrition, how she uh, championed in the White House, how she was like the great, you know, how, how great she was, and with the White House and like everything else along the way. And you know, they can. They can also lend their brand and their endorsements to documentaries or fictional programming on Netflix that align with their beliefs and values. Now, it's unclear as to how much they'll make on this. But, you know, given this is like social media and everything on the way, they have they basically signed with Netflix a five-year, $300 million deal to lure Ryan Murphy away from 21st Century Fox. But, you know, Mr. Murphy, he is... Among the television industry, most sought after programs and everything, after producers, everything on the way. Now, this deal is evidence to President Obama, former President Obama, who left the White House when he was just 55 years old. Oh my God, I can't believe he was 55 when he got out. But he intends to remain enraged and engaged, not enraged, engaged in the nation's civic uh, business. Even as, you know, as just a person who sometimes will clash with Trump's views and everything along the way. But his legacy continues on and that's where he wants to go. Now, it's it's also a clear indication of that the former president remains inter interested in the uh, intersection of polit uh, politics, technology, and media. Now, he's maintained a low profile, former President Obama. You know, he and his wife, they're actually out there making... The writing memoirs, which both are reported paid more than sixty million dollars. Yeah, dang. And Mr. Obama, you know, he's been he's paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for speeches in the United States and around the world. And the Obamas are, you know, they're rarely seen in Washington where they still live because, you know, they're actually out and about making a difference in the world, unlike some people. But, you know, uh Mr. Mr. Obama, he basically, he loves making a difference in our world. And he is long and strive to make sure that the information out there is correct and making sure that people actually have their own opinions about this too. And, you know, in the last several months, he's actually talked about with technology executives and wealthy investors to uh, about the threats to the American democracy for the manipulation of news. So, you know, people are saying, oh, this is fake news, this is who knows what's going on with this news, everything else along the way. That's what he wants to make sure about. And he wants to make sure that everything is tip-top and make sure everything is correct and real. Now, he has, you know, he's privately and publicly talked about this in many ways, you know. And he just basically, he basically talked about this in his 2016, you know, you know, well, not, not his campaign. But he's actually talked about this during the campaign uh trial and you know and the issues that he cared about and if you guys ever watched the show with him and uh david litterman on um, when he on you know david litterman he brought back a show he put a show on netflix in which he talks to six people that he truly enjoyed talking to and obama was one of them and obama said to him he said if you watch fox news you are living on a different planet than you are if you are listening to npr and he said that in a you know interview broadcast in January on his Netflix program, and you know basically he said you know last program, uh, at a forum in New Delhi, uh, former President Obama he conceded that if I watch Fox News I wouldn't vote for me, I would watch it and say who is this guy you know basically one one, and evidence is showing that former President Obama he's out there you know making sure that people are 
not spreading out false information about the candidates and issues and everything along the way. And he wants to make sure that this is actually the true thing going on, you know, because, you know, social media's impact on uh, society become even clearer, you know, last month when the special counsel, Robert S. Mueller III, you know, he ish, he indicate, uh, indicted 13 Russians and three companies that may have been using social media companies to undermine the democracy in the United States and push voters to reject Hillary Clinton. So, basically, there is a lot that we really need to look at. We actually need to like look and watch what we're actually looking at and trying to get the information about. But with that being said, you guys let me know what's on your mind about the whole finding Amelia Earhart, Trump and Kim Jong Un, Obama and Netflix, anything that's on your mind. Let me know people. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm out there for you guys. I always love being out there for you guys because I love you guys 100 percent Oh, uh, but with that being said, I hope you guys have a lovely day. You know, you know, peace out.